Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about mixing paints in watercolors. This is going to be just kind of a general how I like to think about it, how I like to experiment, how I like to make sure that there's cohesion in the paints that I'm mixing together. I love being able to to work on all of those things, to think about it and to hopefully get better at it every time I do it. So so yeah, today will be a little bit more low key, but it'll just be talking about about a lot of those things, a lot of those topics. I do actually have two really quick announcements though. Right now I have a holiday sale going on, which ends on Monday, that's November the 30th, and that is 20% off for everybody. The code is BLACK20, BLACK all capitals. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. So, so yeah, if you've been waiting on getting an original or an Inktoberbook or enamel pins or anything, all of the stuff over on my shop is actually part of the sale. So, so yeah, that's a great time to go and stock up. Also, the painting that I'm working on today is going to be the postcard for Patreon for the month of November. So as long as you're signed up before November ends on November 30th, then during December, I'll be shipping these out to everybody who has signed up for the $10 tier or up. I'm really excited about how this piece turned out. So I can't wait to send it out to my amazing patrons. And of course, there is that link down in the description. It'll take you over to my Patreon so you can check that out. So one of my favorite things to do, and I'm... I will absolutely admit I am not the best at it. It's something I'm still working on. And maybe that's part of why I love doing it is because it is exciting to to figure things out and get a little bit closer to my end goal. But but anyways, one of my favorite things is when when I can work on getting an environment and the colors in it to really feel like a character is part of it. So for this piece, I have a character in a very cold place. She's in a snowy forest. And I, I want her colors to also fit with that. I want it to feel cohesive and I want it to feel like the colors of her surrounding environment are, are actually influencing the colors that she is made up of, which, which is something that absolutely happens in real life. They're, the way that light hits things, the way that colors bounce off of one object to another that can all just play into how we see colors. So it's really cool to be able to, to figure that out, to get a little bit closer. And like I said, I'm not nearly as close as I'd like to be, but I think the biggest key thing to getting there is, of course, studying actual reference and seeing how colors are are, I guess, manipulated, I guess. I'm not sure if that's quite the right word, but by their environments, by other colors that are near them. Uh, but anyways, so for this piece, because like I said, I want it to be a very cold environment and a character who has warm colors in her. She's, she's actually almost entirely made up of warm colors. She needs to be able to feel like she's also leaning towards being more cold than, than usual. So there's a few steps that I take to help my warm colors lean a little bit cooler. So to start off with, I will use a much cooler red paint than, than say if I wanted her to be in a warm environment still wearing a red coat. And uh, yeah, that's one of the fun things about having having different pigments is that you're able to learn about them a little bit more and figure out which ones lean more cool, which ones are more warm, how they react with different colors when you mix them with other colors and uh, quinacridone red and quinacridone rose. Those are two examples of reds that to lean more cool. So those work as great bases for, for reds that you would want in an environment that leans cooler. And uh, I don't remember exactly which paints that I used. I have quite a few red, red color paints. Uh, but yeah, I just did a lot of testing to figure out which ones I, I felt like leaned cool enough, but also I I also mixed in a little bit of the blue that I used in the background. So that's another tip that helps with a lot of different things, but it helps to to bring down that warmth that you'll find in the actual warm paints. So by bringing in a little bit of that, that blue color, it helps the red just fade a little bit more and sink into the background. And doing that actually can really help create cohesion in a painting, whether you're trying to make it fit a little bit more with the coolness or the warmness of an environment. You can use that just to make sure that the colors that you're using do have a certain tie together. So, so yeah, you can go in and take a, 
a singular pigment or color and mix a little bit into all of the colors that you're mixing or most of them and that will help harmonize the entire piece. I do this sometimes. I don't always go in and do every single mixture for every area of a painting like this, but it does help to be able to pick out different areas within a painting that can have mixtures like that that just actually have this very subtle tie together, but it it works really well. I love this technique for when it feels like things are separating a little bit too much or like I have too many colors going on. If you can do that, that can help a lot. But I always recommend testing out the different paint mixtures because not all reds and blues, say when you mix them together, create a, a bright, pretty nice purple. A lot of them end up mixing things that while they may be great for certain situations, it may not be perfect for that situation that you're using it for. So, so yeah, I, I highly recommend that you always have a scrap piece of paper that you're working on so that you can put little swatches down and make sure that it actually looks the way you think that it will. Another step that I took so that the warm colors would fit with the cold environment was to actually do the shadows with a very cool mixture of colors. So there is the common concept idea that warm light creates cool shadows, cool light creates warm shadows. And by that concept, then I would have or should have gone in with a warm color for the shadows. But I definitely prefer the effect and the look that comes from from going in with really cool shadows. It just helps marry the two together. It helps her look much more part of the environment. And that that actually isn't always the case, the, the warm light, cool shadow. There are environments and places and specific lighting situations where it isn't always really obvious like that. So I tend to use that as a jumping off point, but it is something that you can really break anytime if it makes sense for you. But, but yeah, that was one that helped really tie the skin together with the environment, specifically in this one where we could go in with a purple and a blue eventually, and it does just chill out her face quite a bit. And I love that effect. I love how instantly it just makes her look like she's kind of cold, like she's in this snowy, cold place. And this is definitely not a rule by any means, but this is something that I like to do. I find that if I have, say, several elements that are red in a painting, I like to tend to use the same mixtures of of paints to get that red or the, the same paint itself. And that just helps, again, tie everything together. It also helps everything look like it's behind the same the same lighting and environmental coloring of how things look, if that makes sense. So, so where I went in with a certain mixture of reds for her coat, when I went in and added that extra scratch on her face, I, I had it match her coat as well. So that again, it looks like those could be the exact same color locally. And if she were to walk into a different environment in a different place, they would remain the same red color. And painting white hair is one of my favorite hair colors to paint. I love how luminous you can make it, but also how many variations there are to actually painting it. So I tend to really gravitate towards cooler shadows. I love going in with blues and purples to create shadows on almost anything or some variation of purples and blues. Uh, but with white hair, I find that it can make it look more like a light blue color, which sometimes that's what I want. Sometimes I want it to look really, really light white in the highlights, and then it fades almost a bit into more of a blue color. So sometimes that's the right course of action. Sometimes the right action is to actually go in with lots of different pastel shades for the shadows in the white hair. And that creates kind of this opalescent look. I, I really like that look also, but but yeah, it's all about just figuring out what that particular piece needs. And for this piece, I wanted it to look more like actual white hair rather than blue leaning hair that was just really light. So, so it ended up being a mixture of grays with a little bit of blue in there to cool things down. And uh, I was happy with that. I think that that tends to be the one that makes it look the most like like white hair is to go in with the gray like that, but it can add a lot of life and character if you use different shades 
and different warmths of gray within the hair. So I have some areas that have cooler grays, some areas that have warmer grays. And I actually went in over the entire, her, all of her hair. And I did a light wash at the beginning that was just like this very light yellow color almost because I wanted it to be a little bit more of a warm white, something that might be more naturally occurring where it would lean a little bit more warm. And don't forget to check out my holiday sale. That's 20% off everything over at my shop with the code BLACK20. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. And of course, don't forget about the Patreon postcard. If you're interested, the artwork from today, Ice Heart, will be available as the postcard for November. So anyone signed up by the end of November for the $10 tier or up will get this shipped directly to your mailbox. I, I love how this one turned out. I'm really excited to send this one to everybody. But, but I also have the original painting available at my shop so there there was that link again down there um but yeah as always i do want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons over on patreon you guys are absolutely incredible i can't thank you enough for your support and uh that's it for today so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time